everyone, welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet, Certified. I am your humblish host, Mr. Rebecca Jane Felgate, and today we are getting Coco Loco as we delve deep into the top 10 scary Mexican myths. I want to play a little game of true or false with you throughout this video, so if you want to write a little comment roundup at the end of your thoughts from 10 through to 1 as to what you think is true and what you think is false, then I would be pleased to hear it. Of course, while you're down there, please do leave a thumbs up on this video and share it with a friend that needs to hear some Mexican myths today and do check out the links to our most amazing Instagrams in the description box where you'll also find our source links. Stick around to the end because I'm going to be reading comments. Alright, coming in at number 10 we have El Somberon. What is a myth or a legend video without the boogeyman? Nothing, that's what. El Somberon is a baffling one really, he's like a lusty boogeyman with a weird hair obsession. Bald? No worries. Luscious locks? Watch out. El Somberon is said to wear a big black hat that covers the majority of his face. He's a short man with big eyes that poke out from behind a silver guitar that he'll use to serenade ladies with. You'll know when he's been around as you may find horses with curiously braided tails or a plait in a girl's hair that she doesn't remember placing herself. One tale says that he stood outside on the balcony of a beautiful woman with long hair. On hearing his music, she became mesmerized by him. He returned to her balcony night after night to the point where the girl actually stopped eating and sleeping. Her parents were worried about her, so they cut off her hair, which immediately made El Somberon lose interest. So gutted, although honestly, probably for the best, a gal needs some dinner. If I had to choose between luscious hair and having a good taco, like, give me the food. Another type of boogeyman is coming in at number 9. This one is less about the hair and more about the drinking the blood of children, so swings and roundabouts really. Right? That's right, we have the legend of El Cuco. It is thought that this particular Mexican myth was brought over from Spain in the colonial era. El Cuco in life was a man suffering with tuberculosis, the disease that offed Santine in Moulin Rouge and honestly, I'm never going to get over that. Tuberculosis basically was a huge killer. These days, it actually still is an issue in Mexico, however it is curable, thank goodness. In the era of El Cuco though, a cure was a long way off. The legend goes that El Cuco met with a corandero, a traditional healer. She told the man that the only way to cure the disease was to drink the blood of a child and then rub their fat on his chest. Gnarly. So, diligently, El Cuco did this, having no qualms about kidnapping and murdering a seven year old boy. What a savage. These days, El Cuco is said to roam the streets looking for misbehaving children to kill to cure his ailments. A modern day myth coming in at number eight, we have El Chubacabra is a classic cryptid. A chubacabra is a legendary creature in folklore, a blood sucking animal vampire hybrid. Its name literally translates to goat sucker. Now the legend of El Chubacara is most popular in Puerto Rico, northern Mexico and the border states of the USA. It became most prevalent however in modern times. In 1996 following an incident in Puerto Rico, the chubacabra allegedly began killing goats in the Mexican countryside. Now I found a mid 90s article on CNN which quote a Mexican woman. She said, It's horrible because we don't know what it is. I don't think it's a coyote or a dog, like officials say, because a dog can't kill 10 goats with a single blow. To this day, some 25 years later, people still believe that a vampire goat sucker was behind the killings. Often, stray hairless dogs in Mexico are mistaken as the chubacabra, which adds fuel to the myth's fire. Coming into number seven, we have the owls. Roll after roll of gibberish, and all of a sudden, the owls are not what they see. Oh, I love a good owl. I really do. I love how evil they look and like, you're not going to be messing with no owl, are you? Not in Mexico anyway. La Lechuza is a woman by day and an owl by night. There are a lot of strands to the myth, but it is generally agreed upon that the woman has been wronged in some way and is looking to seek revenge. Some say that the Lechuza snatches children in her talons because her own child was killed by angry villagers for a crime that they did not commit. Others say that her child was killed by a drunkard and so now the shape-shifting owl exacts revenge by perching on the rooftops of bars waiting until closing time to attack drinkers stumbling out into the night. Others think that the owl is simply a familiar of a witch. Either way, the owls are bad news bears. There have been gigantic bird sightings happening over northern Mexico, especially in Chihuahua and Tamaulipas and the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. These have been going on for centuries and a lot of people think that it is the La Lechuza looking for revenge. 
revenge. In general, Mexicans are traditionally distrusting of owls. Coming in at number 6 we have La Lorna. This is actually a very sad and enduring Mexican myth and legend. La Lorna is a wailing ghost that is said to bring misfortune or even death if you hear her cries, rather like the banshee in Irish folklore. The story behind the legend is one of a woman named Maria who is raised in a small rural village. Quite the beauty, she piqued the attention of a passing nobleman who married her and whisked her away from her family to a house outside of the village where she had two children. Unfortunately for her though, her husband would travel a lot and when he returned he seemed changed only to care about their sons and seemingly was disinterested in her. One day he returned with another woman which drove Maria to insanity which I totally get, like get her out. Her husband bid farewell to his sons and ignored his wife, leaving with the other woman. Maria in utter despair threw her two children in a river. Upon realising what she'd done she tried to save them but they'd been swept away and drowned. She then killed herself and pleaded at the gates of heaven to be reunited with her sons but the gatekeepers told her that she must find them first. She now is stuck in purgatory as a ghost always looking for her children. It is said that if she finds lost children at night she drowns them hoping they contain the souls of her lost sons. If you hear wailing or crying near a body of water at night, you are to run in the opposite direction for fear of being drowned or meeting the bad luck associated with La Lorna. Coming into number 5 we have El Moto the Headless Bandit. The El Morto tale is truly terrifying. I mean, what isn't to be afraid of? It comes in the form of a headless ghost, which, ah. This myth, or we hope myth anyway, actually comes from the US border with Mexico, dating back to the Gold Rush era. Now, a lot of people were looking around the border regions for gold. On top of that, the US Mexico border was hotly contested around that time, with an area of no man's land between the two countries. In this area, Bandits were rife and Texas Rangers were around to keep them in check because America. One Ranger, William Bigfoot Wallace, wanted to teach the bandits a lesson after one persistent criminal known simply as Vidal stole a bunch of Mustang horses. When he was caught, Bigfoot Wallace and his Ranger friends chopped off Vidal's head, sat his body on a horse, attached his hands to the reins and strung his head to the saddle. Crikey. This was supposed to teach the would be bandits a lesson not to mess with the Texans, but some poor sod had to deal with finding the horse and its deceased cargo too, which is like a double blow. Despite eventually being taken down from the horse, legend has it that Mexican Vidal rides through the valley of Rio Grande today, with his ghost being dubbed El Morto, scaring Americans everywhere they are, like, nay, ah. Coming in at number four, we have the legend of the crystal skulls. Ah, crystal skulls, it truly is a great Mexican mystery. I also love starting things with ah, don't I? Like, ah. Many curious crystal crystal skulls have been found across ruin and burial sites in Mexico sparking intrigue. There is a myth about the skulls that seems to say that after the 13th has been discovered, mankind will unlock the secrets of the earth and begin a new age. Now, This date was predicted by the Mayans to be in 2012, but we haven't got there yet. Better get looking for more skulls. Myth aside, the skulls are still an enigma due to their intricate crystal work which would have been exceptionally complex and intricate for the time in which they were created. Coming into number 3 we have the eclipse. Pregnant mamas, watch out. In Mexican folklore, it is said that if a pregnant woman is exposed outdoors during a solar eclipse, her baby will be born with a cleft lip or cleft palate, which is pretty bizarre. So like, why though? Well it seems that the belief dates back to the Aztec eras when the best explanation for an eclipse was that a bite had been taken from the moon, possibly by some kind of wolf god. For them it made sense that if a bite could be taken from the moon, a bite could be taken from an unborn child in a womb should the mother view the eclipse anyway. So to protect her, she would have an obsidian knife placed on her belly before she went out. Now these days the tradition and beliefs are upheld and a woman tends to take a metal key or safety pin out for protection at night in the event of an eclipse. But honestly, let's be like totally fair, eclipses are pretty rare, they don't happen that often so I wouldn't be too worried, she says. Coming into number 2 we have the day of the dead. Mexicans kind of have a macabre humour when it comes to death and I can get on board with that, I truly can. Death is coming for us anyway so we may as well dress it up in a floral hat and have a good time playing with it right, rather than fearing for it all of our lives. 
party with death? Anyone? Is anyone watching from Mexico? Because like, hello, tell me more about this. The Day of the Dead is a big party in Mexico. It centers on La Calvera Catrina, a female skeleton wearing a fancy hat that's basically the personification of death. She stems back to the Aztec mythology of the Queen of Mictlan, who keeps watch over the bones of the dead and presides over festivals celebrating the afterlife. Traditionally, Mexicans believe that a person has to get through nine challenges to reach the afterlife, and family members will provide them with food and water throughout this difficult journey. On the Day of the Dead, it is believed that the barrier between the spirit world and the real world dissolves. During this time, the souls of the dead awaken and return to the living world to feast and drink and dance and play music with their loved ones. I actually really kind of love that. It's kind of like a fun day of remembrance without crying and, you know, tequila and sombreros. Okay, we have a crazy and enduring story to end off this list at number one. We have The Tale of the Traveling Soldier. The transported soldier legend has it that in 1593, a soldier from the Philippines transported from Manila straight to Mexico City in their sleep. What? Gil Perez was said to have nodded off as he leaned against the governor's palace wall on October 24th, 1593. Now, if that date rings a bell, you're about to hear why. You can't blame him for nodding off. He had a very long night because the governor had just been assassinated. He was standing guard as a new leader was being appointed, and he drifted off. As he slept, though, curiously, he woke up in Mexico City. And I'm not sure if you've looked at a map recently, but that is very, 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 very very far away, like other side of the world away. Perez was questioned by officials in Mexico who found him. They threw him in jail after he told them that he'd simply just woken up thousands of miles from where he was supposed to be. Suspicious, honestly, I, I get it. Eventually, when a passenger ship from Manila turned up in Mexico City months later, crews were able to confirm Perez's story about the governor's assassination and the soldier's disappearance. So, like, WTF? Like teleportation? Alien abduction? Or just good old fashioned myth? Let me know what you think. So that was the top 10 scary Mexican myths. What did you guys think to this list? Do you think that any of these myths are actually true? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Before I go, I want to read some comments from one of my most recent videos. It is chilly, chilly, chilly. It was the top 10 scary iceberg stories. Sava Centaur said, Penguins will start the communist revolution. Right. Okay. I'm here for it, I think. Rick Sanchez C137 said, I live in Anchorage, Alaska, but the coldest I have ever been was when I was visiting family in Fairbanks. It was around minus 50 Fahrenheit below zero. Oh my god. God, did your eyelashes freeze? I need answers. Ripper Rice said, To be honest, I didn't see how the melting ice will rise ocean levels, because if you have ice in your cup of water and it melts, the water in the cup stays the same. Let me tell you, friend, it is about water displacement. Rather than being a lump in one place, it's a liquid. Now, lumps kind of stay where they are, but liquids flow and flood. Does that help? I hope so. Thank you guys for watching this video. Once again, don't forget to let me know what you think was myth and what you think was truth. Also, do you want me to do a myth from the country that you live in? Why not suggest it in the comments section? Leave a thumbs up on this video, share it with a friend, check out the links in our description box to our social medias, and I will see you guys soon. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. I'll see you later. Bye.